Hey YouTube, Aiden slash Just Aiden here to talk to you today. A little bit of a small equipment update. I'm not going to play because I'm taking a day off from the instrument. Played really hard the last few days. I'm probably going to make a video about taking rest days here soon. Um, reminder, if you want to lesson with me, link in the description. Otherwise, let's talk about new stuff and stuff that is gone now. Um, this, mainly, uh, this update is not a lot of new stuff that I've gotten, but I've sold I think like 10 mouthpieces and a bunch of instrument parts and just stuff that I don't need. Um, basically, I have, a, I have a ton of mouthpieces. I, I think I've had like 65 or 70 at my peak, um, the high peak up there somewhere. Um, I'm down to maybe 40 something. Um, and I've always had several categories of mouthpieces. Now, there's the first category where I have mouthpieces that are not worth anything that I'm never going to use. And I just, you know, like I can't get rid of them. There's nothing I can do except use them as paperweights. I have mouthpieces that I use that I like. They're in all my cases. I play with them. There's mouthpieces that I like but I don't use. So like stuff that I've collected on purpose. Um, ones that I've gotten that are kind of sentimental to me. Like I marched drum corps with them. Um, someone gave it to me or it's got a cool artist name on it. And then there's the fourth category of mouthpieces that are good, um, that are worth a lot, that I don't use. And I had <laughs> like 10 of those in my drawer. And one day I just opened it up and I was like, I don't need all these. I'm never going to use this stuff. It's a size I don't use. It's a brand I don't really like anymore. And so I sold them all and I feel a lot better for having gotten rid of all this stuff I don't really need and was kind of like worth some money. So that was a big thing. Sold a lot of stuff. Um, and I did acquire some things as well. Um, as part of the purchase of my Bach 50B, the single valve, my friend also sent me a Bach Corporation 4 mouthpiece. So now I have the complete collection from 3 to 7, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 uh, Bach no letter mouthpieces, which is neat. Um, these are mouthpieces that I probably won't use, but I do collect. Um, and if I get a bass trumpet or something, maybe I'll use um, like my Bach 6 or something like that. So that's neat. Finally completed a collection of the no letter mouthpieces that I can play. Um, they do make, Bach did make an 8, 9, I'm not sure if they made a 10 or 11, but they did make a 12. And those are all just too small for me to play, so I'm not worried about not having those. Uh, also had some more like trial by fire thoughts with my Bach A47. Um, just put a lot of time into it and then I actually had some playing engagements where I played principal and orchestra and then I played trios and quartets with friends um, where we'd swap on bass and tenor um, throughout the, the session and um, just kind of figured out the limitations of the instrument. So obviously this is designed to be a principal instrument, a solo instrument, and it really just wants to gravitate straight into that track. Um, playing principal in the orchestra, it felt so good. This giant, um, kind of like thick, warm sound that I can just lay over the orchestra, um, play pretty gosh darn loud, and it doesn't really break up. Um, just an awesome principal sound. Um, but then playing uh, quartets and trios with friends, when I was on second or third part, it just didn't have the same kind of breadth of sound like a Bach 42 would have to fill out the part and still like make a good sound. I felt like I had to play like maybe a little too loud and it was just a little too narrow, um, which is almost perfect when you want to play principal, but on second or third it just didn't didn't feel perfect. I'm, I'm not sure how much of that is me. It's probably a good part of it that's me. But also this instrument is so specialized. And I'm not sure if I should have an instrument that's that specialized since I'm not a principal player, a first player. Um, Maybe I should get something that's just a little more willing and able to play kind of any part. So something interesting I found out about this, I'm not sure if I'm going to get rid of it or not. Um, I still really like it. It plays really easily. And I love the sound it gets, but maybe not the best for the actual use that I have for it. And then lastly, I also sold my double tenor gig bag by Cronkite. Um, I've had this for a while. Awesome bag. Holds two tenor trombones, but that's not especially useful to me. Um, it doesn't really fit a bass trombone, even if it's the only instrument in here, because um, the gussets or the bell circles inside, because it has hard ends to it, right? The gussets are eight and eight and a half inches, which are not um, bass trombone bell size. So if you actually 
you know, like just crunch the end of this, it would crunch your bell instead of crushing the gusset, which is what's supposed to happen. So I got really lucky and I found this monster Cronkite double bass trombone case. Um, and it's just a monstrous case. I thought it was a bass tenor case. And I got it home and I was like, dang, this thing's really big. And then I put both of my bases in it and they fit perfectly. So I have a double bass case. I'm not going to use it for that. I'm going to put a bass and a tenor in here, um, which is very much more useful for me. Um, but it's still awesome. It's pretty light. Um, it's got the same big old backpack straps. It's got a handle on the end. Um, and hopefully at some point I'll actually get to use it and you guys will get a review of my giant double bass trombone case. There is a double um, bass tenor case that they make that's in between those sizes and somehow I've randomly gotten the ones on either side. So that's new stuff I've sold, new stuff I bought. Um, not super interesting. Sorry I'm not playing for you guys, but I'll do that soon. See you guys next time.